Coming up on today's show, Nissan officially delays the launch of its Aria SUV because of the ongoing chip shortage, one that Elon Musk says is similar to the Lou Roll shortage of last year. A new survey suggests that interest in the Ford F-150 Lightning eclipses interest in the Tesla Cybertruck among regular consumers. And Professor Jeff Dahn and his team at Dalhousie University secure six million Canadian dollars of grant funds to further EV battery development. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News and to the month of June. If you had Monday off this week, I hope it was a good day. I know it was really great to have a few days off here. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. We are starting today with the sad news that Nissan has officially confirmed its upcoming Aria electric SUV will suffer a delayed launch due to the ongoing global microprocessor chip shortage. Like pretty much every other automaker out there, Nissan reacted to the global COVID-19 pandemic by changing the number of computer processors it had ordered from suppliers, while the electronics industry, which had an increase in chip demand due to more people working from home, increased its orders. The result, like most automakers, any subsequently tweaked orders from Nissan was pushed to the bottom of the pile. Nissan says it will now begin deliveries of the Aria in Japan this winter, but those in Europe, North America and China will have a longer and as yet unconfirmed wait time. It wasn't so long ago that Fiat's then CEO, the late Sergio Marchione, was begging customers not to buy the 2012 Fiat 500e in North America because Fiat Chrysler was losing thousands of dollars on each compliance car it sold. But now, in a world post-Covid and post-merger, with PSA to become Stellantis, Fiat is setting itself a goal of becoming the first legacy automaker to become fully electric. Brand boss Olivier Francois told Autocar this week that between 2025 and 2030, Fiat will slowly phase out all internal combustion engines across its global lineup, being 100% electric by decade's end. Given that some markets, including the UK, want to ban all new internal combustion engine sales by that point, we're guessing Fiat won't be the only automaker to set itself that goal. When Ford first unveiled the Mustang Mark E electric SUV, it got a lot of flack from Mustang loyalists who maintained that the four-door plug-in would never be a true Mustang due to its form factor and its drivetrain. But now it's official. Ford's making and selling more Mustang Mark E's globally than its internal combustion engine Mustangs are. Moreover, the Mark E's popularity is helping Ford experience a growth in market share. Right now, Mustang Mark E production is only 1,800 vehicles higher than Ford's ICE Mustang production, but it is a start. I should note, however, that Mustang production has been impacted by the aforementioned chip shortage, so that may be playing a part, but it's certainly good to see EVs trumping ICE. It's 18 years since the last Concorde flight landed, and in that time, we've heard plenty of companies promise supersonic flight, but none actually made it happen yet. Only in the last few years have supersonic flights started to look like commercial realities again, with United Airlines announcing this week that it wants to buy 15 Overture supersonic craft from Boom Supersonic for use in its fleet. But as a new study by NASA and MIT shows, supersonic flight isn't going to do anything for a cleaner, greener world. The study showed that CO2 emissions could be between 4 and 10 times higher per seat kilometre for supersonic aircraft travelling at 2.2 times the speed of sound when compared to a current subsonic planes. Sure, it might get you there quicker, but can we really deal with a high emissions jump? I don't think so. When Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck last month, there was a lot of interest from potential owners. In a few days, Ford had managed to exceed 70,000 pre-reservations, myself being one of them. That, of course, pales into insignificance compared to the pre-orders that Tesla has received in the same time frame for its Cybertruck. In fact, right now, Tesla has several orders of magnitude more reservations for Cybertruck than Ford has for the F-150 Lightning. Many, I'd guess, from Tesla and EV fans. Yet a study this week by market research firm Pipsy Say suggests that the regular car and truck buyers think that the F-150 has more appeal than the Cybertruck. 
Surveying just under 28,000 Americans, the Polestar discovered that not only 25% of respondents said they plan to buy an electric truck in the future, but 32% say they are most impressed with the F-150 Lightning, followed by 24% for the Tesla Cybertruck. The truck war is on, and frankly, we're all going to be winners. Results from the world's largest vehicle-to-grid trial suggest that vehicle-to-grid technology could seriously save consumers money, especially when the costs of associated hardware needed to make V2G possible drops. The trial, which took place in the UK, found that V2G participants could earn upwards of £725 sterling every year for just keeping their EV plugged into the V2G system. Moreover, the savings offered were far higher than they were for a simple single-direction smart charge system, where cars only charge during off-peak and excess generation periods. Right now, the cost of V2G harder for the home is still a tad on the expensive side, £3,700. But the survey concluded that if economies of scale could reduce that to just £1,000 sterling, the payback for most customers would be below five years, with no noticeable strain on their vehicle's battery packs. We think it's pretty obvious by now that Hyundai is eager to get as many people behind the wheel of its brand new Ioniq 5 EV as possible, especially after some of the troubles that plagued the automaker with its Kona Electric. And this week, Automotive News reported that one of its executives has stated that the company is looking at what amounts to be a three-month try-before-you-buy setup. Essentially, you'd sign to pay a lump sum subscription for three months worth of use, insurance, maintenance and charging in order to see if the car suits your lifestyle and needs. Then, at the end of the subscription period, you'll be able to hand the car back, buy it outright or set up a lease. I think this proves that Hyundai is confident its Ionic 5 will be a popular car, but it could also terribly backfire if customers aren't as impressed as it hopes they will be. If you live in a major city and you don't have access to off-street parking and charging, or you just happen to be super busy and are driving into an unknown town, finding a place to charge can be a bit of a bugbear. But if you're in LA, San Francisco or Dallas, you'll be able to make use of the new charge-up service now being offered by Spark Charge. It's developed a mobile battery bank charging solution, which means for $25 a month, you'll be able to book a mobile charging valet session. Spark Charge's charge-up team will arrive at your home, office or wherever your car happens to be parked, and it will fill your car up with electrons using its portable rapid charging solution. We're digging down on the details and charge up if you're watching. We would love to try it out next time we're in the Bay Area. Professor Jeff Dunn and his team of world-class researchers at the Dalhousie University in Canada are among some of the most important battery researchers in the world. It's their work that's helped Tesla and other companies bring lower cost, more energy dense, more reliable lithium ion batteries to market. And this week, Professor Dan and his team were celebrating a new 2.9 million Canadian dollar research grant from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, as well as an additional 3.1 million Canadian dollar grant from Tesla to help them develop the next generation of advanced batteries for EVs and energy storage projects. It is the largest grant the university has ever received for this type of research and will be used to develop lower cost batteries that have a longer lifespan, a higher energy density, are safer to store and use, and use more sustainable resources than today's design. Frankly, we should all be super excited about this one. Chevrolet has been working pretty hard in recent months to discount its outgoing Chevrolet Bolt EV. This is partly due to incoming refreshed and more affordable models with the 2022 Bolt EV and Bolt EUV, but also because of some of the negative press that it has suffered as a consequence of completely, frankly, mishandling the handful of Bolt EVs that caught fire due to a battery fault. But if you're an existing GM customer, Costco is currently offering up to $14,500 off the price of an outgoing 2020 or 21 Bolt EV, meaning you could get one for just under $25,000. If you're not a GM customer, Costco says it'll give you nine grand in cash back to buy one. So if you trust that the 20s and 21s don't have the battery problems of the earlier cars, and so far there's nothing to suggest that as they do use a different battery pack design to earlier models, you could get a stonkingly good deal. And now it's time for short shorts. The Biden administration has put a hold on all oil and natural gas leases in Anwar, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska pending an environmental review. 
Opening Anwar to drilling was a priority under the previous administration, but it could end up being halted altogether. We all know the Tesla Model S plant will be the fastest and quickest Tesla Model S ever made. And this week, car nut Jay Leno claimed on the podcast Spike's Car Radio that he was present when a Model S plant set a new quarter mile record for a production car. It's not verified, but given Musk and Leno are friends, we think it's definitely possible. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has said that the global microchip shortage is impacting Tesla production, likening the situation to the scarcity of toilet paper early in the COVID-19 pandemic. We reported last week that two slots on the board of fossil fuel giant Exxon had been filled by environmental activists nominated by an activist hedge fund. But it turns out that three of those board positions will eventually be held by environmentalists, not just two. Facing significant financial challenges, Renault may be looking to combine several operations into one major manufacturing hub just for producing electric vehicles. Tesla plans to buy more than $1 billion of raw materials for electric vehicle battery production from Australia every year for at least the next several years. Startup Zeta Motors hopes to produce the first electric motorcycle with two hub motors. The company has some ambitious goals for performance, range and safety, and its designs certainly look beautiful. Canadian EV maker Daymac Inc. has announced that when its new Spiritus electric tricycle comes out in 2023, it will have the ability to mine for a wide variety of cryptocurrencies when parked. Because let's use excess energy, I guess. Football, that's soccer for you Americans, Titan David Beckham has invested in Lunas, a British firm that does EV conversions and upcycling of older internal combustion engine vehicles, including industrial vehicles and very expensive Rolls Royces. Convenience store chain 7-Eleven is building 500 new DC fast charging connections owned and operated by the company at 250 of its North American retail locations. Tesla stock took a very hard dip after an anonymous sourced report from China claimed that orders in the country had fallen by more than 50% between March and May. The 4% drop in stock equates to billions of dollars. When Westport, Connecticut brought a Tesla Model 3 as a new police cruiser in 2019, there was consternation over its sticker price. But the data now shows that the electric car has saved the city tens of thousands of dollars in operating costs over its internal combustion engine counterparts. The Alaska Energy Authority is looking to build an electric car charging network from Homer to Fairbanks along the Alaska Rail Belt, but regulatory changes may be needed to make the plan actually feasible. As FedEx looks to have 50% of its delivery fleet electric by 2025 and its whole fleet electric by 2040, the company says that despite some of the challenges, the overall cost savings in going electric are considerable and certainly worthwhile. Toyota has said that though the company has no plans to build electric vehicles in the United States, it may be open to doing so if demand for EVs in America continues to grow. Oh, Toyota. Croatian electric car and parts manufacturer Rimac has unveiled its production Nivera EV hypercar. We did a whole story on the Nivera, but I want to take a second and apologise for my mispronunciation of the car's name and note that Nivera is not a wind, but rather a severe sudden storm that comes off the Adriatic Sea. Persana is looking to build a $125 million facility in the UK to purify raw materials brought in for its mines in Angola to produce high-performance magnets needed for both electric vehicle motors and wind turbines. Porsche and Shell are partnering to build a DC fast-charging electric vehicle corridor in Malaysia. Six charging locations will be home to individual dual-head units capable of charging two cars at once, and it will facilitate travel between Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and Penang. An international team seeks to electrify and automate Amsterdam's 60 miles of canals with autonomous electric boats moving people around without aiding congestion to the city's roads. BMW's new all-electric iX SUV and i40 sedan have received their official US pricing. The iX will start at $84,195 US dollars and the i40 at $45,400 US dollars, not counting fees or incentives. We did a whole video on these vehicles, which I will of course link to below. 
Emotive says that its new two-speed gearbox designed for EVs has been tested and shown 99% peak efficiency in independent testing in its low gear and 98% efficiency when it's in its high gear. Electric boat startup Candela has shown designs for an electric hydrofoil water taxi. The company's C7 electric hydrofoil has been impressive in demonstrations, so hopefully things will carry on moving forwards. It's long been known that lithium, which is critical for electric vehicle batteries, is plentiful in seawater. But now a team from King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia have published a paper highlighting a brand new method for extracting that lithium in a more cost-effective way. The Biden administration's plans to tackle climate change and transition the entire country's fleet to clean transportation will include major battery increases in recycling capacity in order to reclaim lithium and other precious metals needed to produce new batteries. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. As the world struggles to reduce its emissions, We've seen some pretty unique solutions for proposed mass transit, personal transport, and yes, even air travel. Global shipping, which does represent a significant proportion of global transportation emissions, is also a big problem for a CISA trying to reduce its carbon footprint. So far, we've seen hybrid oil tankers, electric container ships, and the most excellent ocean bird, fully enclosed sail-powered cargo ship from Walenius Marine as proposed ways of reducing emissions of shipping. But now we have a new design to add to the list, courtesy of Michelin. It's been busy using its knowledge of tyre technology to design and prototype a concept cargo vessel that uses inflatable sails and telescopic masts to aid in travel. Sadly, it would be a hybrid. The sails would reduce emissions and increase efficiency by about 20%. But given a large cargo ship can admit as much as 50 million cars worth of emissions, well, it's a major step in the right direction, if it ever reaches production. And finally, we have covered all types of alternative fuel offerings on this channel, including hydrogen fuel cell cars powered by cows, reformed methane from biomass digesters, and yes, even a bus powered by reformed gas from human poop in Bristol, UK. Because Bristol. But now we can add a new one to the list, a Hyundai Kona EV owned by Urban Utilities in Australia. Its name? Number two, aka the s v According to the pun-filled press release, the Queensland Australia Utilities' new ride is the second electric vehicle to join its fleet and powered by biogas from sewage treatment, which is fed into a Kona generation unit at the Oxley Wastewater Treatment Plant in Brisbane. While the car can drive several hundred clicks on a charge, it might take each person a while to generate the power they need from their daily bathroom habits, as apparently one person's daily waste is enough to travel just under half a kilometre. But you know, given how much toxic waste is being generated by the Australian government towards EVs, maybe that's one way of fueling a cleaner evolution. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's roundup. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help make you the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program that's set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. We'll leave the link below. You might have noticed that we've just spun off a new shorts channel to Transport Evolved Shorts, so if you're not already subscribed, please do. And don't forget to subscribe to both this channel and our Transport Evolved Take Two channel as well, and make sure that you hit the bells so you don't miss our content. And if you'd like to continue to help us grow, please become a Patreon, send us a Ko-fi, or head to our Red Bubble store. Every penny helps, and we are now able to do so much more than we were a few years ago, and it's all down to you, so thank you. And if you are heading to Redbubble, please check out our special Pride designs. We are donating 100% of any profits from our Pride range during the month of June to the Trevor Project, so let your flags fly. We even have a Pride-colored T logo design that is perfect for allies. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and keep evolving.